It's been a long time since I recorded something about Flutter. There are some interesting developments in the Flutter framework and in the Dart programming language. And I was thinking maybe that could be an occasion for me to get back into this interesting technology. So today it's a Flutter in practice special. I will show you how to integrate, how to use GraphQL in Flutter. So when you look for backend solutions for Flutter, most tutorials talk about Firebase. And Firebase is an interesting technology, but it's also a classic example of vendor locking, which means that you have something very nice, such as Flutter, and then you have this business offering and it's nicely tied together so that it's very convenient to use. That's a big advantage, so you can quickly create something. But at the same time, it's a closed solution where its provider can make you easily dependable. It may be difficult to migrate. And when I say difficult, it's not only about technical difficulties, but sometimes, you know, it's, it's a cost just to reorganize the data to fit a different model. But having said that, Firebase, it's, it's, it's a fantastic product. It's always very difficult to create something that's convenient to use. And, and that's the case, in my opinion, for Firebase, that you can just, you know, you can forget about all the details, all the edge cases, and you can just start using it from day one and it works. At the end of the day, it's about trading freedom for convenience. You use a closed product and become tied to a particular company, in this case, Google. The longer you use the product, the more difficult it can be to switch to something else. On the other hand, GraphQL is open. So it was created by Facebook. The integrations, the implementations are open, so we can use remotely with anything right now. It's not super popular, but at the same time, it's, it's getting there and it provides some nice advantages. So today we will try to just use GraphQL and Flutter, and we will be using this uh, great library called GraphQL Flutter. So in this tutorial, I will be using Flutter 2.2 and Dart 2.13. And finally, this is the, the app we are going to build. So it's going to be an e-commerce app where you can display products. Once again, we will be using this open source project called Sailor, which is a GraphQL platform for creating e-commerce experiences. So in other words, it's a backend, a GraphQL backend that provides all the notions you need when you're creating an e-commerce uh, website or app. So you can host it yourself. They provide some Docker images or you can use their cloud offering. I'm not sure. Let's see. Pricing. So you have open source and cloud. We'll have a chance to use a free developer plan, but it's, as far as I know, it's not ready yet. Okay, so before we start building the, the Flutter app, let's do the query we want to um, use. So we can go to demo Flutter IO GraphQL, and here you can you know, write your queries. So we have the schema, the docs, and in our case, we will just display a list of products. So this will be the, the products query. And we will grab edges and name. And it displays the name. So we will also need ID and maybe description and then thumbnail to display the image. It's the URL. So this is the query we will be sending from our Flutter app. And we'll try to display that. Okay, so let's start by creating a Flutter application from VS Code. So this will be Flutter new application project and this will be Flutter e-commerce. So now it generates all the files, the, the scaffold, the project scaffold. We can run the simulator like that. Let's maybe keep it on top. So let's launch the project. The target is our simulator here at the bottom. It will take a while to compile. So we have it, it works. It's a counter. And now we can start adding, start integrating with this uh, GraphQL endpoint. So I will stop it because I would like to first add some dependencies. So let me go back to the, the Flutter, the GraphQL Flutter package. So I noticed that the documentation is not perfect yet. 
So I had to do some uh, custom changes here to make it work. So first of all, we won't be using version uh, 4 as it's stated here, but version 5, which is stated here. So I believe if we just say GraphQL Flutter without specifying a version, it should get the most recent version, which will be version 5. So once I save, it fetches the package. And if I open pubspec lock, GraphQL Flutter, let's see the version is version 5. So we are good. And that should be it for that. So now let's start to write our app. So I will remove the counter and those comments. Let's keep the, the body button as well we will start with the simplest possible integration and what i mean by that is that we will just paste the graphql query as string inside our flutter app so it's not perfect it would be better to generate the proper interfaces from those uh, queries and it would be also nice that each query is in a separate file but I will cover that in the next video. For now, let's just use the simplest possible way to make it work. So I'm just creating a variable and I'm pasting the same query I had here in the playground. So I'm getting five products with ID, name, description, thumbnail. And it's the same here. I'm just taking 10 products here and I name my query. You can name it anything, but let's keep it products. So now, Let's try to execute that query. So we will write the integration here and the main. I need HTTP link. This will be, and the URI will be this URL over here. So demo sailor.io GraphQL, like that. The next step would be to create the client. So GraphQL client link will be the HTTP link. And then we need to specify the cache. So this will be GraphQL cache with a store and we will use in memory store, the simplest possible way. And now let's wrap this GraphQL client with value provider, uh, sorry, notifier like that. That should be it. Let's maybe be more explicit here. Notifier GraphQL client, client equals this. And then let's do something like that. The app will be the GraphQL provider, something that provides this client to the widget tree. And so the client is client, and then the child will be our app. So this part over here, we will just specify over here and we will run the app uh, with this new variable. So that's not the most proper way of doing that, but for now it will be enough. And let's try maybe to run this app in the simulator. So the app is empty and let's fetch the data. Let's use the query widget that's provided by the GraphQL Flutter to manage the data exchange. So we need to use two parameters here, options and builder. So for the options, we will just say query options and document will be our string that we defined over here. So products GraphQL. And we need to wrap it inside this helper function, like so. And for the builder, we will have query result and then two other parameters that won't be needed right now. So first we can check if result has exception. And if that's the case, let's just return text with the message. Exception to string maybe, like that. Then we can ask if the data is loading. And if that's the case, we could return circular progress indicator to show that something is loading. And finally, if we have data, we could say 
product list, results, data, and then we need to extract the proper fields. So let's get back to our example. So when I execute this query, I'm getting data and inside I have a key products, then edges and its array. So I need to repeat that here. So that's not ideal. It would be much better to use, you know, proper fields. So to have Dart objects, but I will cover that in the next video. For now, let's uh, just use it like that and let's print it. Probably not the best way to to test it, but uh, I also need to return something here. So Dart is uh, happy. And if I save, I see that I'm getting the response. I'm getting all those products, all those 10 products. So it works, the query works. And now what's left is to display them here. So instead of that, let's just quickly try to design something nice. So I will use colon, children, uh, padding maybe, edge inset, all 16, something like that. And here, let's just use text and let's say products. So we could maybe improve the style a bit. So text, team, headline, five. Okay, so we have that. And then we will use the grid view but we need to use expanded widget first. So it takes the rest of the screen. Uh, so grid view builder. And now inside we need item count. So this will be product list length. And then we need item builder uh, that gets the index. And here we could just return text with uh, product list index and then we again need to use something like that and we also need grid delegate so i will use sliver grid with fixed cross axis count cross axis count two so it doesn't work let's check the data so we have edges and then we have node okay we have to do node as you can see it's not ideal okay we have it so let's maybe improve a little bit. Spacing. This is spacing. And here we will return a colon. Children. And inside we will have a container. We have some padding. Edge insets. All. 2.0 uh, with maybe 180, the same for height. And as a child, we will use image network. Mm. So product list index node. And then product thumbnail URL. Okay, it works. Perfect. We are almost there. So let's add some padding, this time symmetric, vertical. And as a child, we will use the name. It works. Maybe at the end we could add the price, but we haven't fetched that. So let me just hard code it for 50 for all products. Yeah, something like that. We could improve the style here a little bit. So font weight, font weight, bold, and voila. There you have it. A very simple integration. Let's review. We started by creating this query, GraphQL query. We tested it and using the playground. So we know the shape of the query and then we know the shape of the data. We put this query as string in, in a variable in Dart. Then we configured our GraphQL client and we provided this client to our app so that inside the app we could use the query widget and then by specifying the 
options, which is the, the query itself. We could access the data, the result for builder. We have three cases. An exception happens. The data is loading. And then if data loaded, we display it arranged as the as a grid view. So it's relatively simple. And now to improve that, it would be great to get the schema we have we have here, analyze this schema and generate the Dart types automatically based on that. Then in our application, instead of accessing arbitrarily any field of the data, we could just type, uh, you know, dot and the proper fields will appear. The only fields available for that shape will be available. So that would be ideal. And we will, I will cover that in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.